Welcome to the Authority of Love. My name is Greg Williams. I want to thank you again for joining us on the broadcast here on WJMM 99.1 FM, Central Kentucky Christian Radio. Now, if, if you are watching the video, you'll know this. If not, you wouldn't. But yesterday I had one of the ministry shirts on that I've been invited to share in at times. Iron sharpens iron. It's from an Iron Man ministry. Today's I got a shirt on Museum of the Bible. So this is my week to be a little more casual, but to always still make it about ministry and the Lord. So if you're, if you're interested, you can see that on, on the video. But uh, if you did listen to yesterday's um, message, you'll get what I'm about ready to say. And if not, shame on you. No, 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 I'm just kidding. <laughs> but you won't get this right away. Hope you were accepting of others and greeted all your brothers and sisters in Christ with a holy kiss or at least an affectionate hug or handshake, right? That was a little bit of yesterday's one another's in loving as Christ loves us. I'm sure there are a number of guys out there just making a list of all the young ladies in their church they truly like to share a holy kiss or hug with, right? But as we learned, that's not what this command is all about and how we are to love like Jesus. Go back and check it out. You can learn more. And it can strengthen us as believers and as the body of Christ. Now, again, you can listen. You're listening on the radio, but you can listen to this in podcast format at WJMM.com and go to the podcast tab near the upper right and then the Love and Lordship links and you'll get today's and the last two days, the previous two days, or go to LoveAndLordship.com, our ministry website, and you'll get all kinds of podcasts and videos and articles I want to encourage you to dive into those. There's a lot of scripture in them. I've linked them in the articles, and I pray that you would take to heart. One of ours yesterday was instructing or teaching one another. I sit and listen and and, and have others instruct and teach me. And so we're called to do that with each other. You can listen there. Also, you can contact me at loveandlordship at gmail.com, loveandlordship at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you and engage with you. So please do that, and thanks for those who have and for your encouragement. Now, I'd like to tell you that today's one and others are going to be fun and easy, but hopefully we're beginning to grasp the reality that loving others, as all these one another instruct us to do, doesn't come naturally to you and me. We'd like to think they are, and for those watching the video, I just clicked on my lights, so it's gotten a little better in here. Uh, but here's the deal, and this is it's so prevalent in Scripture. Jesus said it. We have to do it in our walk with Him, in our marriages, in our family, and in the church family. We must die to or deny ourselves in order to love well, just like He taught and modeled for us. We're going to see the same again today as we talk about how we are to wait for and serve one another and do it equally. Stay tuned as we talk about what that really means. 1 Corinthians 11.33 says this, So then, my brothers and sisters, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. Hmm, that seems kind of odd, right? I mean, part of it is courtesy, right, and manners. But today's first one another is somewhat interesting in that it is very simple to understand, but evidently not always easy to follow through. Maybe that's true of all the one another's and certainly true apart from Christ. We find it there in 1 Corinthians 11, 33, where we're told to wait for each other. When you come together to eat, what does he mean by that? In in the context here, it strongly appears to point to those who were giving into their hunger pangs and coming just to fulfill those with no regard for other believers. This caused them to fall or fail in two ways. One, to wrongly partake of the Lord's Supper, the communion or Eucharist, as many of you know that, because they were more concerned with filling their bellies, their flesh, feeling good, rather than acknowledging the Lord's sacrifice, death, and payment on our behalf, on their behalf, and therefore bringing condemnation on themselves. Go look at 1 Corinthians eleven twenty-seven as he kind of wraps that segment up. Number two, they were eating impatiently and indulgently or selfishly. That's what verses 17 through 22 clarify there in 1 Corinthians 11. And they were doing it without thought, care, or deference for others. Deferring. They they were like, so I'm going to get mine. That's literally what they're saying. I.e., they were not waiting respectfully on all those who would come and gather to partake. Now, that's just good manners. 
But it goes deeper than that. That's why we got to die to ourselves in order to put others above us. Both of those points there that I just talked about out of Scripture, they point to a heart that is hardened and not open to humility, generosity, fellowship, and placing others above self. It hinders and or destroys the loving fellowship of believers, which is the desire of Christ for his bride, the church. It seems simple, but when we move in our flesh, our hunger pangs satisfy me, there is a need for this command, not just about eating and partaking properly, but it is only accomplished with hearts of love, loving one another as we wait, discipline ourselves to push back from the food and defer to others, and in particular, maybe those who don't have as much. So let me ask you, what guides and drives your heart, your mind, and your body? Is it flesh, hunger, lust, selfish desires? Or is it humility, patience, graciousness, gratitude, generosity, ultimately others above me, above self? You see, only Jesus can give you the latter. And that's why all of these one another's of love and loving are found only in him and him in us by the Holy Spirit. As we continue with these one another's in Scripture, I need to remind myself, and if needed, you, to receive this reminder as well. The one another's are included in Scripture to literally help us love others as we love ourselves. Mark 12, 31, the second greatest command. And as Christ has loved us, John 13, 34. You can go back to last week, and we started with this. However, as we spent time sharing previously in these messages we can do neither without first knowing and learning to love God with all we are. That's Mark 12, 29 and 30. As we prayerfully attempted to do that through our Names of God series, right? Then we have to learn to love who we are in Christ, Ephesians 2.10, and many others as we identified in our Identity in Christ series. That's what, that was the focus of that. Go back and check them out over the last several weeks. We've done a long few series here to bring this all together. And with that said, then we find the, the, the context for the next one another, continuing in Paul's first letter to the church at Corinth in 1 Corinthians 12. Now, we were just in 11. So in 12, in verses 25 and 26, look at what the Holy Spirit leads Paul to write just after reminding us to wait on others. He tells us that love is to have equal concern for each other. In a simple summary, don't show favoritism, bias, or prejudice toward any others. The text here is Paul describing the various parts of the body. That's what 1 Corinthians 12 is all about. Our literal body, the hand, the nose, the feet, whatever it may be, as an example of how all the parts are absolutely and essentially needed and each are of great importance. No one part is greater than any other, regardless of the function and recognition given to it by those around us. This is how the body of Christ is to function, and by giving equal concern and care for each other, we avoid division and create unity. He then follows this teaching on the unity and importance of all the parts and gifts of the body with waiting on and deferring to one another, right? That, that was our second one there. Equal concern for each other with what we know as the love chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Here the Holy Spirit, through Paul, describes what happens when we place undue importance and priority on what we're doing, activities, programs, accomplishments, rather than why we're doing it in love, to point them to Christ. This is why we must show, not show, I'm sorry, not show partiality or favoritism in any way because it divides us and in so doing diminishes his love in and through us. Not his, him, but our representation of that love. We rejoice in the blessings and fruitfulness of others and we hurt when they hurt. This is love in action out of our hearts, surrendered to Christ as we care for each and every one another in loving fellowship in his church. How are you caring for all those in your sphere of influence? As Paul in the Holy Spirit continues to address the various 
early church plants, we find more and more of these one another's encouraging the body of Christ and how we are to love each other and all other believers in him bring us to the final one another in today's message. In Galatians 5.13, powerful chapter in and of itself, the whole book is, but in Galatians 5.13, just before Paul describes and contrasts the lust of the flesh with the fruit of the Spirit, he tells the believers then and us now to serve one another in love. You see, preceding this passage, he has spent time admonishing, correcting to some degree, believers regarding two key issues. One, to know the freedom they have in Christ. And two, not to abuse that freedom so that it becomes license, a false, quote, freedom, unquote, of unbridled sin, self. How are we to do this? Well, you're going to hear it till you, till, till you uh sick of it, but I hope not, by placing others above self in love and serving our fellow man. That's how we do it. Doing this is an overflow of our love for Christ. It keeps us from turning our freedom in Him into selfish satisfaction and seeking our own fleshly desires and pleasures. This serving is not simply a duty on a checklist, but as Paul states, it is done because of and in love that we only have in, in Christ. That's why it's essential that we understand and continue to seek and grow in our love for God, know and love who we are, so that we are serving one another in love. Wrapping up with food for thought here, what does your service flow from? Is there evidence in your life of your loving relationship with God, not just attending church, giving and serving and activities, but time spent in His Word, in prayer, and in meditating and listening to Him? Are you waiting on Deferring to others without favoritism or bias, that's how we serve. Here's some action items, four of them. Spend time with him in his word and prayer daily. Read and study the scriptures in this episode is a way to start. Ask the Holy Spirit to teach you, that's number two. Number three, how do you practice patience and deference to others? Where do you need to grow in these areas? Number four, take some time to search and ask the Holy Spirit to search your heart to find out the source of you serving others. Respond to whatever you find out in line with God's word to serve selflessly. As always, we'll continue tomorrow with more one another. So we are loving as Christ loved us and loves us. Invite family, friends, loved ones, and enemies to join us. Remember, you can go to the website loveandlordship.com. I'm emphasizing this this week in the mid-year because we are in mid-year fundraising. There's a Give tab near the upper right. You can click on that. It takes you a minute or so, and you can give one time or ongoing. All donations are greatly appreciated and tax deductible. Thank you for that. And if it's not us, keep praying until the Lord shows you who he wants you to partner with in that way. I want him to bless you. So you find that out and be obedient. If it's us, thank you again. You can contact me at loveandlordship at gmail.com. Love to connect. There's two other ways you can give as well. You can do through mobily on cash app, cash.app, A-P-P, forward slash dollar sign, love and lordship, all together with both L's capital. Cash.app, forward slash dollar sign, love and lordship, with, to get all together with both L's capital. Thank you for that if you are, and thank you for your prayers always. Uh, thanks for joining us. Thanks always to the Lord. Make it a great day, and God bless in Christ. Stay tuned for Bill Reeser and Encounter coming right up. And then at 1245, check out Greg Horn and Hope is Here. I'm Greg Williams, and you're listening to The Authority of Love.